2016 marks the 100 year anniversary of the 1916 Rising. Throughout these three episodes, we're going to take a look at the role of Kerry people during the rebellion. First of all, we'll take a look at Dublin and its involvement, and also Roger Casement and his role and the landing in Banna. Home rule was rising tension all over the country, with the majority of people voting for it, and a small group of rebellions called the Irish Republican Brotherhood voting against it. In secret, the rising was planned, and the group were able to obtain guns from the Germans. The rising was supposed to take place on Easter Sunday. This never happened, as the guns were seized in Kerry, and O. McNeil sent out a press release stating a countermanding order. This, however, did not stop the IRB. They moved their plans to the following day and took over the GPO. Led by Patrick Pearce and the other leaders, the Easter Rising lasted from April 24th until April 30th. In the end, the British Army won, and the nine leaders, along with six more, were executed a week after the event. There's no doubt that Casman is an interesting character in history, but there's a lot more to him than what meets the eye. As characters go, I have to say, of all the figures I've studied in history, he's probably one of the more interesting ones because so many things happened to him in his, his relatively short life, and he himself was such a complicated character and a complex character that it is quite interesting uh, to, to dig deep and to try and get a better understanding of him. Roger Casement had spent um, over 20 years of his life working in Africa um, and in the latter part of his career in Africa he became very involved in investigating um, uh, the rubber industry in the Congo, um, particularly um, allegations of brutality towards the native people who were collecting the rubber um, and, that, and this was for the uh, Belgian King Leopold. Um, and he became very well known as a result of that and he did the same kind of work then in South America. The perspective he brought to bear on that was uh, the perspective of an Irishman and b because of this he became known as a humanitarian. Quite a mysterious char character in many ways and he did appear to flip-flop on, on, on traditions but if, if you look at him and look at him carefully and study his life, um, he was very much part of the British establishment but he was also very much uh, in favour of the downtrodden and the, and the weak and the, those who couldn't speak for themselves. He was working for the British Foreign Service and he resigned in 1913 and then became completely involved in, in uh, Irish affairs and became completely involved in recruiting for the volunteers. Then he was sent to America as part of you know fundraising drive for the volunteers and then sent to Germany to see if they could get German assistance for, for the Irish cause. The guns that were supposed to arrive here at Banna Beach were being carried by a ship called the Odd, led by Sir Roger Casement. Following his capture here, Casement was charged with high treason, sabotage and espionage against the Crown. As a result of this, Casement was later hung in Penteville Prison in London. Personally, I think in Ireland we should remember him as the, as the nationalist that he was and, the, and the, the man who helped to create the freedoms that we enjoy today. Uh, throughout the world, he's remembered as a humanitarian and I suppose a, from a personal perspective, I'd like to see that side of him remembered more, more especially in Ireland. We, we don't have too many humanitarians, I suppose. But again, I think Casement deserves his place in that as well because he did bring a lot of, of, of sufferings and misery to the fore and that's not known in Ireland to the same extent. And I personally feel it's, it's the area that we should put zone in Ireland and concentrate more on him. As a nationalist, of course, he had a huge bearing on, on, on the events of 1916 and subsequent events. But he's become a kind of a lost figure and a forgotten figure and it's important that we take the opportunity to remember it. When I landed in Ireland that morning, swamped and swimming ashore on an unknown strand, I was happy for the first time in over a year. Although I knew that this fate waited on me, I was for one brief spell happy and smiling once more. I cannot tell you what I felt. The sand hills were full of skylarks, rising in the dawn. The first I had heard for years. The first sound I heard through the surf. Their song as I waded in through the breakers. They kept rising all the time, up to the old race at Curraheen. And all around were primroses and wild violets and the singing of the skylarks in the air. And I was back in Ireland again.